given to Moses. However, archaeologists have failed to find any evidence that an ancient people ever stopped here, or, as the Bible also indicates, spent 40 years wandering about this barren wilderness itself. Despite the absence of proof, Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike do not question the authenticity of the tale told in the scriptures. If something didn't happen on Sinai to the children of Israel, they would have had to make up a story that it had. This is such a turning point in the people's life to go from being slaves to being the recipients of redemption and the law. This is a primary moment in Israel's self-understanding. The people may have heard God proclaiming the Ten Commandments at the base of Mount Sinai, but the thunder and lightning obscured their full meaning. God then orders Moses to the mountain top to receive the law again in writing. The Israelites were very familiar with the Code of Hammurabi, the sophisticated set of laws by which the pharaohs ruled, as well as the legal systems of other Near East societies. Much of human behavior considered base in the commandments, murder, stealing, adultery, was also forbidden in those cultures. But the resemblance ended there. For the first three commandments were emphatic in declaring how the Hebrew God was different from all other gods known in the Near East. There could be no sun god, no rain god, no god of war. Only one invisible god, who humans must never attempt to represent in the form of idols or speak of irreverently. Part of what's going on in the Ten Commandments is they're making the point, we are not the Egyptians. Part of what it's saying is you won't be like those people who enslaved you and who were so committed to their monumental architecture, they didn't care how many of your people died making the monumental architecture. While Christians and Muslims later adopted the full spirit of the Ten Commandments, the second commandment, which prohibits making a likeness of God, wasn't taken literally by Christians. Masterpieces of church art boldly present God in Bible stories. Had a major commandment been broken, how is this interpretation of a sacred law explained? There's a different uh, dynamic at work in the Christian community from the beginning because of the whole doctrine of the Incarnation. If God has become flesh in the person of Jesus, then the human body becomes an image of God, which after all is the biblical tradition. We are created in God's image. But as soon as, I mean, Jesus called God Father in his own prayer. If God is addressed as Father, then one could begin to portray God in paternal uh, human imagery. For those of the Jewish faith, however, no likeness of God was or is permitted. And while Moses would spend many days on Mount Sinai with God, the Bible offers no physical description of him. Nor during this period of divine instruction is there indication Moses saw him. He was at most a voice, a presence. When God finished speaking with Moses at Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Exodus 31, 18.
Then suddenly God is angered and orders Moses off the mountain. God has just seen that the Israelites below have built a false idol, a golden calf, and are worshipping it. He threatens to destroy the entire community and have Moses begin a new nation alone. Thus begins an extraordinary sequence of events which continues to provoke theologians and scholars. First, Moses pleads with God to revoke his catastrophic plan. And surprisingly, God accedes to Moses' wish. When Moses arrives on the scene and witnesses the flagrant idolatry himself, he also becomes incensed. In his rage, he smashes the holy tablets. He sees broken commandments, as it were. And what does he do? He breaks the tablets on which the commandments are written. And so it is as if a certain brokenness evokes another brokenness. As if the chaos evokes the anger. What possessed Moses' people to defy the Lord? How could they worship a golden calf after all they had come to know of God? The golden calf was not a substitute for God. It was a substitute for Moses. Because as long as Moses was there as the visible symbol of the God of Israel, they were fine. The great sin was that God was trying to teach the Israelites that the greatest reality is that which you cannot see. And they hadn't learned that lesson yet. But for the sin of idolatry, Moses orders the righteous to take the sword to every brother, friend, or neighbor who defied the second commandment. The sons of Levi did as Moses commanded, and about 3,000 people fell on that day. Exodus 32, 28. The fourth commandment, thou shalt not kill, already given to Moses twice, seems to have been totally disregarded. How could this terrible act be reconciled with the law? For that beginning community, bad religion was seen as contagious. Think of it as a bad infection. When the Levites kill those persons, their task is to cut out the infected portion and in doing so, get back to the true religion. The correct translation of the commandment is not thou shalt not kill, but thou shalt not murder. The Bible clearly believes that in certain circumstances, killing is justified. But the violence at Sinai is an exceptional episode in the Hebrew Testament. Never again would brother kill brother on this scale. Moses makes a second journey to the mount to find that God has forgiven the Israelites for their transgression. He gives Moses a new set of tablets and bids him to lead his people on. His face aglow, Moses returns for the final time from his theophany, a term which describes a mortal's encounter with the divinity. The tablets are to be kept in a special ark beneath the tabernacle. Both will be borne by the Israelites on the danger-filled journey ahead. Is there confirmation of any kind that these momentous events actually took place in the wilderness? I believe that there was a theophany at Sinai. 
our evidence for it, however, is only in the Bible. There is no extra-biblical evidence. There's no mark left on the terrain, no fragments of tablets at the foot of the mountain. But there's the witness of the Bible, and there's the evidence of the existence of the nation of Israel. Of all the mysteries of the Bible, perhaps none is more intriguing than why the laws governing a new nation would be handed down in the midst of the menacing Sinai, a remote region that seems inimical to life itself, rather than a settled community's temple or court. I believe the law was given in the wilderness because the wilderness is where we live. You don't need a law in paradise. You need a law to help us navigate through the wilderness. Nobody knows where Sinai is. Perhaps that was intentional because we're not supposed to worship a mountain. We're supposed to worship what happened there. We don't know the place, but we have the message. While each commandment carried a religious or moral message, Many were also considered revolutionary for the ancient time, perhaps none more so than the fourth. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, or the alien resident in your towns. Exodus 20, 8.